Fat grafting is the transfer of live fat cells from one location of the body to the other in a sterile fashion. And it can be used for both cosmetic and reconstructive purposes. Uh, for cosmetic purposes, it's used typically to add volume to areas of deficiency, and we see those areas of deficiency develop most commonly in the cheeks and the temples uh, in the 40s and 50s uh, in patients' lives, and often adding extra volume into those areas makes them look more youthful. In a reconstructive purpose, uh, we can add volume to deficient areas where we've rebuilt an area after, let's say, a cancer surgery, where there's extra volume loss that makes one side of the face look different from the other. And it's important to remember that when we're adding volume by way of fat, we're actually replacing like with like, and that's most uh, applicable for our cosmetic cases, where really we're getting loss of fat cells through the aging process. And by adding fat cells back into that area, we're really replacing the exact tissue that was lost. And that's a little different than what we would get with uh, those synthetic fillers or any of those uh, artificial products which typically get absorbed over time when we're doing a transfer of fat cells when the fat cells actually are incorporated appropriately into the area and go through that process of take, that is the, the term for it. Uh, those fat cells are essentially there for life. So uh, it's a really provide a, a good way of providing long-standing correction. Uh, for some of these changes. Uh, the other important thing about fat cells, which is completely different from any kind of other filler that you might use or any volumizing agent, is that fat cells themselves are, are live cells. Uh, they actually have these wonderful characteristics. They carry stem cells with them, and they've been well shown to improve the tissues around them. So when a, a fat cell is transferred, or numerous fat cells are transferred into any area, they uh, improve the pliability and the mobility of the area. They improve the, the collagen and matrix tissues around them uh, by releasing growth factors and cytokines that improve the quality of those tissues. Uh, and they've even been shown through the release of these agents from the stem cells and fat to a, create a, a neogenesis or a new growth of collagen, and which ultimately ends up causing a thickening or a, a fullness and a rejuvenation, a thickening rejuvenation of the skin itself. So. Uh, fat grafting itself is invaluable because it's not a matter of just putting in a product in to, to make up space, but it, it's actually a transfer of a biological living cell uh, that can do a lot of good in its new environment. So fat grafts are typically harvested under local anesthesia. We tend to identify a donor site, infiltrate that with a tumescent solution, and using a selected harvester designed not to damage the fat cells, under suction harvest some of those cells uh, and then take them through a processing uh, procedure where the cells are gently manipulated, washed, and under certain circumstances centrifuged so they're prepared to be reintroduced into their new environment uh, in the selected locations where we want to place them. Uh, other pr when fat grafts are going to be used around eyes uh, or in very fine lines and wrinkles, uh, another processing technique is a design which basically breaks down the fat cells into micro fat uh, to be applied in these very sort of thin, thin uh, lined areas in, the, in these fine areas rather than to bulk up, let's say, an area like uh, around a cheekbone where larger amounts of fat can be utilized. So typically, uh, there was a, a larger role for fillers, uh, synthetic fillers, a number of years ago because synthetic fillers could be applied in a one-to-one -one ratio. In other words, uh, you could uh, do an immediate correction of what you saw there at the, at the time of surgery or time of treatment was what you would get with the patient. And fat in past, before the new processing techniques were introduced, uh, was typically uh, done with uh, the area overcorrected with the thought that you might lose or get some resorption of some of the fat. Now with the improved techniques, there's a much better take of the grass and again correction with fat is now approximately a one-to-one -one correction as well. Uh, but again, just because it's a replanted uh, cell or a transferred cell to a new location, it doesn't always survive or go through the process of take and in some cases has to be repeated. But remember that once that fat cell is there, it's there for good essentially. Uh, the other thing to remember as well is where synthetic volumizing products that uh, are off the shelf will typically resorb over time, uh, the fat cell stays, and the synthetic products often cost significant amounts of money to provide in enough syringes of that product to get volume of large areas. So when you're using fat, you get a much sort of co more cost-effective uh, restoration of larger volume areas. Uh, in addition to the rejuvenative capabilities of the fat itself. 
So when we use it for cosmetic purposes, we're typically injecting the fat uh, to refill those hollow temples and hollow cheeks. Uh, we're using microfat around the eyes to rejuvenate those, uh, and then using uh, microfat again in some of the fine line wrinkles around the, the face, the marionette lines down near the, the lower lip and jaw and chin area, or, or in the smile lines around the face. So again, fat is an outstanding and much more long-standing method of correction.